I remember when you and Teresa came on the show talking about raising your first fund, and I'm so curious how the landscape today is different, if it's any different. How did this fundraise compare to the last? Well, we were very lucky. We had a number of our, uh, prior, in fact, all of our fund one investors came forward and participated in fund two with the addition of a couple new investors. As you mentioned, Melinda Gates, who has been very high profile and focusing on women in tech. Uh, really, uh, uh, res our story really resonated with her and our track record re resonated with her. So she joined in, as well as Cisco Systems. So Melinda Gates is obviously Melinda Gates, but what, what does she bring to the table? Well, so Melinda has been very, um, very vociferous in her support of, of really driving diversity into the tech community, and she's been focusing particularly on women. Our, our fund, as though founded by women, is actually an investor in men and women. We, don't, we, we are gender neutral in how we approach. However, as a result of our um, networks and how we think about building teams and how we think about how important culture is in building teams, our portfolio itself has become quite diverse. So our uh, Fund One portfolio is about 40% uh, uh, women uh, founders, has a, has a woman as a founder. It's about 30% uh, minority, and actually 50% are immigrants or children of immigrants. Mm. So that was my next question is, you know, if there were more women investors out there, how would the companies that get funded be different? I mean, we might well, see, a, you know, a greater diversity of the people getting funded, but what about even the kinds of companies that get funded? I think that's a great question. We are really, what we believe actually is as a, as a next, we really see ourselves more as a next generation firm, which is really focused on, on investing in companies that are uh, more reflective of the communities in which we live, as well as the customers in which we live. And so, as you see, there's a lot more, um, there, there's a lot more customers where there's women or folks of minority or immigrants. Uh, that that are um, are the purchasers, whether that's on the consumer side, even in enterprise, and um, and more broadly internationally. And so we see that the real opportunity and the real uh, competitive advantage we have by having these broader networks is by investing in more diverse companies with these portfolio that reflect the underlying uh, communities in which they're operating. They're actually going to be more successful, what and they'll deliver better returns. What is the sense that you're getting from LPs, the investors who invest in venture capital funds like yours, about? How much they care? I mean, my understanding is that LPs really haven't cared about diversity very much. They care about returns. Is that changing? Well, I think I, I think actually the real message is that we think that you'll have better returns by investing in diverse companies. And in fact, there's been a number of studies that have shown that everything from McKinsey demonstrating you know women. Uh, run companies with 15% better performance, minority run companies 35% better performance. You have Google has, who, who has done a lot of research around this to find that better, for, better performing teams have more diverse teams in them. And so we actually, the thesis that we have continued to, to uh, understand, which Melinda, if by investing in us, really appreciates, mm -hmm. is that it actually delivers better returns over time um, in, in our portfolio. And Teresa and I have a 20 year plus track okay. record. Um, of delivering strong returns in the tech community, and we think this will give us a, an additional edge. There have been a lot of revelations about sexual misconduct in the VC community by male investors, often geared toward um, female entrepreneurs. I know that you guys are doing a lot of work behind the scenes to figure out ways to combat this. There's been talk of like a third party sort of HR organization right. where people mm -hmm. could file complaints. What progress is actually being made there? I think there's a lot of interest across the community by men and women to really try and, and drive this out of our out of our communities, and so there are a number of ideas. There's a, there's a, and there's a working group um, that are uh, several working groups that are coming at this, uh, men and women involved that are approaching it from uh, an HR challenge to enable a third party access for for those who feel discriminated or harassed that can approach that group. Um, we've talked a lot about delivering pledges and uh, and but I think all of these things really um, are important and critical and we're all we're still at the early stages of many of that but I also think that it's about building strong cultures from the ground up so some of the most successful companies one that I was involved with early on Athena Health many years ago I think did a fantastic job of building a very um, cohesive culture that allows for vo strong voices and diverse voices to come forward because ultimately better decision making is where you're working in a safe environment where you're considering diverse opinions and those are being considered in the final decision process. And so that's where we focus our time and we think ultimately how that will drive change in our community. What sectors are you interested in right now? I mean, you, you used to work at DFJ, you were investing in solar, they're investing in space, electric cars. You know, what do you think are the hot 
sectors of the future? Sure. So we have about a quarter of our portfolio in cybersecurity. That's a, that was about a quarter of our portfolio in Fund 1, and we expect that will be a big theme. I know in Davos, I think you had uh, discussed earlier, um, is continuing to be an important global thesis. And we have uh, a lot of experience in, in looking at cybersecurity um, from a number of different angles, from IoT to um, to uh, how you know, the, the threat vectors in, in different dimensions. So that's a key area for us. AI is another area we, where we've been doing a lot of investment, investing companies like Troops, um, Astro, which is doing it for email, um, uh, Troops is just doing it for sales teams, where we think that using machine learning as an adjunct, uh, companies like Vita Health for healthcare, mm -hmm. really can drive um, better outcomes for those companies and, and better experiences for the end consumer. So those are some of the areas. Blockchain is another one that we're looking at, but primarily around solving business problems as opposed to some of the asset-based um, plays that you're seeing um, in the uh, Robin Hoods of the world. All so right. that's more of our angle.